Hello, we are Team Eagle Pitcher and our project is Advanced Modular Battery Management System, or AMBATS for short. Our technical directors are Daniel Wirtz and Dan Norick. I am proud to introduce the AMBATS team, starting with Adam Bouchard, Electrical Engineering, Alexis Charpentier, also Electrical Engineering, myself, Nicholas Clavet, Computer Engineering, Daniel Mark Jr., Computer Engineering, and Jeremy Zara, Electrical Engineering. Eagle Pitcher is a company located in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. They are leading suppliers of state-of-the-art battery technologies for mission-critical applications such as space, military, aviation, and medical. One part of these custom-engineered systems that is of importance of us today is a battery management system. A battery management system, or BMS for short, is responsible for monitoring a battery in use and provides information such as the state of charge of the battery, the state of health of the battery cells, and has integrated safety built in to prevent battery failures. An assortment of electronic components provides the management system with critical information such as battery cell voltage, temperature, and battery current. This is known as the analog front end. Battery management systems are everywhere, from your phone to your laptop. These devices provide state of charge and state of health estimations well, right? Well, this is because the environment these batteries are exposed to are constant, which fosters accurate algorithms and data sets for the battery's state of charge and state of health. However, Eagle Pitcher batteries are exposed to extreme environments. The launch of a rocket booster produces immense vibrations, and the vacuum of space subjects batteries to extreme temperature fluctuations. New algorithms for state of charge and state of health estimation are needed to push future applications with high energy battery technology and prevent mission failures. Here is a clip of a single common 18650 lithium ion battery venting due to overcharge. Imagine what thousands of these could do. The anticipated best outcome of this project was to create a battery testing system which featured programmable battery charging, pro programmable battery discharging, and automated data collection of voltage, current, and temperature during charge-discharge cycles. Such a system would allow future users to emulate different battery environments where they could develop and test state of charge and state of health algorithms. Throughout the duration of the project, we designed many technical subsystems, including a graphical user interface, charging circuitry, discharging circuitry, analog front-end firmware and hardware, such as cell voltage sensing, bidirectional current sensing, cell temperature sensing, Unfortunately, due to the loss of time because of quarantines and extreme technical challenges, we were unable to put all of these subsystems together into one functioning system. Still, we are incredibly proud of all the systems we were able to design. Future generations of state of charge and state of health algorithms developed using this platform could lead to increased battery service life, an information advantage between battery and the demands of its parent device, and increased safety and failure prevention in mission critical applications. I am now proud to introduce Alexis Charpentier, who was responsible for designing the graphic user interface and the battery charging circuitry in our system. A graphical user interface was programmed using Python's Tkinter library with the help from our computer engineers, Nicholas and Daniel. This interface allows the user to define parameters of a test and data collection. Some parameters which can be defined are the number of cycles to be performed and the custom battery charge and load signals. These signals are configured as a pulse, a sine wave, or an arbitrary signal uploaded by the user. An example of these configurations can be seen in the image to the right with an arbitrary charge signal and a configured pulse discharge signal. Once the parameters are defined, the user can start the test and see the current, temperature, and cell voltage data. This data is also stored in a spreadsheet with timestamps. The programmable charger was designed with safety in mind. Since we are working with live batteries, it is imperative to ensure that there is no thermal runaway while we are performing our tests. When the battery exceeds the threshold voltage or temperature, the charger is cut off until the battery is within safe operating conditions. Once fully charged, the battery is ready to be discharged based on previously defined parameters. A sub-circuit was designed which effectively cuts off the charger to prevent overheating and overcharging. This subcircuit uses comparator op amps to compare a uh, reference voltage to the temperature and cell voltage signals. Hysteresis is introduced into the circuit using a resistor which creates a lag. For example, if the temperature is fluctuating at the threshold, the lag prevents the charger from turning on and off repeatedly. The charger itself is driven by charge signal and is dependent on the current sense output. 
Since the battery has its own voltage, it can act as a source, so there are two MOSFETs whose body diodes ensure current flows in the right direction. Another important ability for our battery testing platform is to safely discharge a battery. Responsible for the designing this component is Nicholas Clovet, a computer engineer. Similar to Alexis's programmable charger, a programmable discharger was created. This device allows us to emulate many different possible loads a battery could experience reliably and repeatedly. If the battery voltage becomes too low, it will stop discharging. If the battery is fully discharged and other charge cycles still remain, the battery will return to the charging cycle. This is the completed discharge driver circuit. On the left is a gate driver, which features an op-amp which is used to drive the battery current through power MOSFETs. On the right is the undervoltage protection circuitry. Under the discharge circuit, you can find the sense resistor which provides the driver op-amp with current sense feedback, and the power MOSFETs which allow the current to flow. These MOSFETs are operated in linear mode instead of being switched with PWM. MOSFETs in linear mode are essentially variable resistors, which is how the current can be throttled to match any load. This is a resistive load bank that was created to take the grunt of the power dissipation. This is all very high power circuitry designed to drive loads from 0 to 30 amps. The MOSFETs, being variable resistors, will dissipate high amounts of power during some discharge waveforms. We use a large CPU cooler to help keep the MOSFETs cool. Throughout these discharging and charging cycles, our battery testing system needs to collect data on important information such as cell voltage, battery current, and cell temperature. Daniel Mark Jr., a computer engineer, developed the firmware for this data collection. Here is the process of how we collect most of the data in our system. The team has the three properties of voltage, current, and temperature coming in from each subsystem we have created to be read through the Arduino and output it to the testing GUI. We needed to make sure that we got each point of measurement to come in near at the same time or at least when they distinctively have to. The way we did that was through timer interrupts. Timer interrupts allow different tasks to happen at separate time intervals regardless of whatever the microprocessor is handling at the time. With just a few calculations, we have our system set up the way we desired it to be, getting our data as fast as we want to. In our previous iteration, each type of measurement the team wanted would have had to happen sequentially in a loop. With interrupts, there are certain conditions set, such as a counter, and the measurements are only taken when the condition is fulfilled. After, we go back to the normal instruction cycle until the same or different condition is met, likely to get another measurement. That way, there isn't an abundance or shortage of information coming through, depending on the type of monitoring being done. To monitor the voltage, we're using two different Luduino boards capable of connecting to the individual cells in one or multiple batteries. Through an analog to digital converter and some communication protocols, the Linduino hosting the main system receives the voltages currently stored in the battery. It is also able to be seen while discharging or charging, as the voltage is one of the main indicators of whether or not a battery is in their operating range, or if something is terribly wrong, like overvoltage, which would subsequently cause a battery to go into thermal runaway. I'll now have Adam Bouchard tell you how we monitor current. Current sensing is an integral part of the battery management development platform, given that the system we developed is reliant on Coulomb counting, being able to accurately measure a battery's current as it is both charged and discharged will allow us to monitor state of charge with a reasonable degree of accuracy. To calculate the state of charge, the current measured by the sensing circuitry would be used in conjunction with the sample time to effectively create a running discrete time integral that would output the battery's state of charge. For measuring the current, we developed a bi-directional current sensing amplifier circuit that is capable of monitoring charge or discharge current separately. There are two amplifiers in the circuit, one for each charge and discharge current, with their own pre-calculated gains to output a voltage that is proportional to the maximum anticipated current in both situations, which is then passed to and interpreted by the Linduino. The current sensing circuit sits between the load and the battery on the high potential side of the circuit. There is a small voltage drop across the sensing resistor, which is scaled and output as a voltage on the other side of the amplifier. This voltage is then read into the Linduino onboard 10-bit ADC, and then a current calculation equation is used to reconvert that voltage reading into the actual current being output by the battery. This process happens the same way, but the current direction is reversed for the charger side of the circuit. 
This is a picture of the finished current sensing circuit. In the upper right-hand corner, the red wire is accepting power from the battery and passing it across to the left through the current sensing resistor and the top center to the black wires on the left side of the board. The right black wire connects to the high side of the load and the other black wire on the left connects to the ground side of the load. Both sides of the sense resistor are connected to the power buses on the left and right of the board, which are then used to pass the differential voltage to each of the amplifiers. Each amplifier has a gain based on their maximum anticipated sense current. For the charging side, the amplifier will output approximately 4.096 volts at 2 amps, and for the discharging side, its amplifier will also output approximately 4.096 volts, but at its maximum of 35 amps. When in operation, only one amplifier outputs a voltage at a given time as an internal FET uh, prevents both from being active at the same time based on the direction of current flow. When tested, the amplifiers operated linearly as expected based on their individual gains so long as the 5 volt power requirement for the amplifiers is met by the battery. Initially, the outputs were very noisy, but several filtering capacitors and decoupling capacitors were added that cleaned up the output signals enough that they would be useful for acquiring reasonable data. Now I'll pass things off to Jeremy to discuss the temperature sensing circuitry. To get a temperature reading that can be read by an analog input output pin on the Linduino, we use thermistors, which are temperature dependent resistors connected to a voltage divider whose output can be interpreted as an analog input for a microprocessor that can give a temperature reading within two degrees of accuracy. The output of the voltage divider is read by one of two eight channel multiplexers that gives out eight different analog inputs in less than a second to a Linduino using one analog pin. We use this method to save space and use less inputs on our Linduino, with all the wires uh, and thermistors connected to a separate protoboard. On this slide, one can see on the left exposed thermistors attached to wires, and on the right is a battery that has thermistors attached to the six individual cells. We work so much on temperature reading for determining state of health and state of charge of a battery. We also monitor temperature to prevent thermal runaway. In conclusion, we hope that this project can continue to be worked on by future Capstone designers, as we are leaving behind a platform that can be used to develop algorithms for analyzing state of health, state of charge, recovery time, and resistance growth of the cells. In the end, we created a system that can measure temperature, voltage, and current, while discharging and charging a battery. We would like to give a special thanks to the following people for their support of Team AM Bats this year. Our technical director from the sponsoring company Eagle Pitcher, Daniel Wirtz, Brendan Schmierbach, our consulting director, and Dr. Harish Sunak, the ELE Comp Capstone Director. We appreciate their guidance and patience throughout us this year.